Today we have a hand for PokerNews.com featuring one of my favorite poker video bloggers, Jay Wynn Poker. He has been working hard at his game, grinding it up, and today we are playing 2550 at the Lodge. Let's get right to it. Last hand of the night, and it's a good one. Ooh. High limps in early position. I'm in a plus two and I have a raising hand. Queen Jack suited, so raise it up to 400 bucks. <laughs> Whenever you're facing a limp, you definitely want to raise with hands like good, strong, suited connectors because quite often you're going to be dominating a lot of people's limping ranges, which are usually hands they think are not quite good enough to raise. And if you do happen to get re-raised, you can still call in position with your very good suited connector playing very deep stack. Folds back around and high puts in a call. Heads up to the flop. The so we have queen jack of diamonds. High has the jack nine off suit. Flop is above average. Queen jack two rainbow. We flop two pairs. High checks to play and flow, and on this board texture, we're just gonna use small sizing. I put in a C bet for $300 and get a call. So on Queen Jack 2, I think I probably would have used a bigger bet size because we are so deep stacked, and also because if you think about most limping ranges, they're gonna be middle suited connected type hands. And all of those, or a lot of those, are gonna have a pair or a straight draw. And if he does have a hand like 7-6 suited, he's going to fold to any bet anyway. So I think because we are deep stacked, I would have just used a bigger bet. This is a very different spot than if we raise and let's say big blind calls, because then the big blind is going to have a whole lot of junky hands. But against the early position limper and caller, they're going to have a lot of pairs, which probably won't fold, although maybe they fold to a 500 bet. And we're going to be against uh, suited connectors that are not going to fold if they have anything. And suited aces, like ace five of diamonds. That's probably not going to fold to any bet on the flop either, as long as it's like $500 or $600. You definitely don't want to go big, though. What a lot of people do wrong here is they go really big because they have the nuts and they want to get paid. But it's a spot where if you go really big, then you do start to make backdoor flush draws and under pairs fold. And you really want those to stay in the pot. When High makes the call, I think he folds a lot of his baby pairs, like six on down. Mm -hmm. Most likely I'm not so sure people fold for a $300 bet into a $900 pot with pocket sixes when we're playing really deep stacked. And to be fair, when you're playing really deep stacked, it's probably okay to call with a hand like pocket sixes because if it checks down, you often win. And if you spike a six or whatever pair you have to make a set, you're at least somewhat likely to win a gigantic pot. Likely he would have raised his sevens plus, so I don't have these in his continuing range. So, so Jay Wen, maybe he knows high. I don't, I don't know high at all. I've never played with him. And so... If you know a lot about your opponent's strategy, like if you presume they'll just never limp in and then call with a hand like pocket nines or pocket sevens, like Jay Wynn's saying here, then it, you do start to be able to remove those combinations of hands from the opponent's range, which I do think makes it even more likely they have suited connectors or suited aces, right? So I, I think people probably call a little bit bigger, but I could be wrong. I mean, it's important to realize that in different games and different regions and different casinos, the players who play in those games do play differently. And so... Whenever you're analyzing poker hands like this, uh, while there probably is one definitively correct answer, against this particular opponent, the correct strategy could be all over the place, from betting 300 to betting 800, you know, whatever. It depends a lot on the opponent's tendency. So whenever you are observing hands, don't think that there's only one clearly right play, because me, as an observer of this hand, I, I don't have all the information. Sometimes he could have a hand like Jack-10 or Queen-10 off, but whatever it is, I want to structure my bets to keep all of these worst hands in off to a turn. The turn is the deuce, completing the rainbow, so no more backdoor flushes. Not that he would have many of these in his range anyway, but let's try to keep worse two pairs and random straight draws in. Usually here, I would want to size up to two thirds or even three quarter pot, but I elect for $900, which is a little bit more than half pot. So turn is a two, which is a complete brick. That's good. Uh, this is a scenario where really you only lose to ace two suited now, right? And there's only two combinations of those, so you're not worried about that at all. It is very likely whenever high check calls the flop that he has, like I said, either a pair, some sort of straight draw, maybe backdoor flush draw. And the question then becomes, will your opponent call on the turn with a gut shot? Maybe they call with like king nine suited, but even then, I think that's kind of unlikely for any reasonable bet. Um, they could also have pocket sixes, but I think that probably folds to any reasonable bet or even to a small bet at this point. So I think this is a spot where I would probably just size up like Jay Wynn said he was considering because again, we're very deep stacked and we want to be sure we can get all the money in or play at least a big pot against a queen or a jack. And I don't think a queen or a jack's ever going to fold. I know we blocked the queen and jack, so it's kind of less likely your opponent has that, but you don't really want to give them really good odds with an open-ended straight draw, which they certainly could have with king 10 or the 10-9, right? So I think I probably would have just gone a little bit bigger but 
whatever. It's, it's, it's very important to figure out what is actually in your opponent's range, right? Like, if you think your opponent's going to fold sixes on the flop and ace five of diamonds on the flop, then what do they have? It means they have an open-ended straight draw or a, a good pair, right? Like a queen or a jack. And if they have that, you might as well bet bigger and just get full value. But if they do have a lot of hands like ace five of diamonds and pocket sixes, perhaps going smaller is better if you think that will force them to stay in, even though they probably should fold out those at this point. I'm also avoiding using a yellow chip here. When high calls, I think all of the smaller pairs are eliminated from his range. So Jaywin says he is avoiding using a yellow chip, which I, I like. It's an interesting concept. I think a lot of people start to get really nitty whenever you start using your big chips because then they think, oh, we're playing a real pot now. So even though he bet 900, if he bet 1,000, let's say, and he put in 10 black chips, a lot of people will view that as you like not really being all that committed to your hand or something like that. It's, again, a scenario where you need to figure out what your opponent perceives because some people think a big chip is you trying to intimidate them and bluff them, whereas other people think a big chip is... You clearly have the nuts and you know you're getting that chip back out of the pot. So figure out what your opponent thinks. And again, this is a spot where it's kind of hard to know what people think unless you played with them a ton. Not worried about a two since the only two he would play the same way is ace two of clubs. Most likely, he has a queen or a jack in his hand. In the moment, I remember praying for a queen since I thought he could have been weighted towards top pair. When the river hits, it's perfectly fine with me. We have a boat and there's still some value to be had. High checks it over a third time and I want to be careful of my sizing. I opt for less than a half pot size of 1.5k, targeting queens but hoping that he has the last jack in his hand. And All right, so let's talk about this. We river the jack, make a full house board is queen, jack, two, two, jack. We have the queen, jack. You want to ask how much will a queen reasonably call? I think probably bigger than 1500 for half-ish pots. I think you can probably get in maybe even like 1700 but 1500 is nice because if your opponent does have a full house, especially with a jack, they're going to feel inclined to put in a raise. This is a situation where if you blast it on the river, let's say the pot is 3500 and you go for a 3500 bet. If your opponent's sitting there with a jack, they may not even raise it out of the fear that you do have queen jack or pocket queens or pocket twos. So... I think a, a medium bet is nice because a queen's just not going to fold to a medium bet and a jack will raise against a medium bet. And against a medium bet, your opponent may think that you're going for thin value with a hand like aces and decide to put in a raise if they're sitting here with a random busted draw. So I like this bet size a lot. Even though normally you want to be going for big bets with your nuts, it's very, very nice to have some nuts in your medium bet size ranges, especially when your opponent's continuing range is mostly queen X that may even find a fold against a big bet and uh, jacks, which may put in a raise against a medium bet. So I like this size a lot from Jay Wen. And he does. When he looks at his hand, it's a potential library that he wants to double check to make sure he has a boat. Funny thing is, I do this as well. Anyway. I would definitely recommend looking at your hand before the flop and on the flop and then not touching it after that. If you need to reference your hand every single street, look at it bef like when the turn card is coming or when the river card is coming. I would definitely not recommend doing what Hyde just did here where he looked back at his hand to confirm he had the nuts and then put in a raise. Uh, as Jaywin says here, almost no one checks back at their cards, looks at the 9-8 uh, offsuit or 9-8 suited and decides, all right, this is a good one. <laughs> I'm going to put in a raise. They just don't do that. They're looking to make sure they have the nuts before they load in a bunch of money. Anyway, high raises it to 4.5K and we only have one action left. I go. Notice that we do get the raise, which is great. Obviously, we have to rip it in. All in for 12.8K. Note that the graphic is incorrect and that high actually reloaded earlier and he actually covers me. Props to him, though, for even thinking about it. But are there even many people getting away from this spot? Ooh, well, let's think about that. Would Jay Wynn actually rip it in here with Ace Jack or King Jack or Jack 10? I think it's probably just a call because you will run into Queen Jack sometimes and you will run into Queens sometimes. Although, you know, Jay Wynn doesn't think the Queens are limping. You may run into twos sometimes. I know there's not that many combinations, but the thing is that if you presume your opponent's not going to fold out a Jack to a jam, then there's no point in jamming, right? So you're just only losing more money when you're against those few nut hands. So it's kind of a weird spot where whenever you rip it in here, you're essentially saying, I, I, I don't care if you have a jack because I, I presume you're not folding the jack. And if your opponent can figure that out, then it's actually very reasonable to fold. Now, I realize a lot of people just would never fold here, but this is actually a pretty big bet. I mean, I think it was a $8,000 re-raise. I mean, that's a, it's a real number. And in the scenario, I highly doubt Jay Wynn or almost anyone in the whole world is just uh, taking some insane bluff and, and going for it. That seems absurd to me. What would they even have to have to run an insane bluff here? Something like King Queen or Queen 10 or something like that? I don't even know. That'd be nuts. So... I think this is a spot where fold is actually very reasonable. I know some of you 
have commented on some of my videos in the past where someone has a clearly like unfoldable hand, like a full house or four of a kind. Remember that video where uh, I had someone, someone had four of a kind and I was recommending folding on the river when it went like bet, raise, re raise, re raise. What do you think they're re raising six times with? It's probably the nuts. And if you don't have these super nuts, well, you're in bad shape. This is a little bit of a different spot because it only went check, bet, raise, all in. But the pot was already pretty big and we're playing a gigantic pot here. So I'm not going to say this is a fold, but I don't think it would be absurd to fold if you presume Jay Wynn is a good studied player. As you can see, he studies at PokerCoaching.com. Make sure you check it out at PokerCoaching.com slash free if you want to try it for free. And against someone who is good at poker, but probably not insane, I think it's reasonable to fold. He eventually makes the call and I painfully share the bad news to him. He's a good guy and I hate to deliver the cooler, but there aren't many people who can take it like Hyde does. He congratulates me. And we're thankful for this hand because we're finally unstuck and up decent for this session. I am very pleased to announce that Jay Wynn has joined the PokerCoaching.com coaching team and his first few classes are now available for our premium members. He covers how to crush the live games as well as the new, very popular format of bomb pots, which are crazy. You can get full access to his classes right now at PokerCoaching.com slash Ooh, it's finally nice to get unstuck. Also, huge, huge props to High for taking it like like it is. I mean, sometimes you lose. Nothing to be mad about. I mean, sometimes you run into it. Sometimes you lose a bunch of money. And that's that. Now, Jay Wayne can go to Disney World. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, let me know in the comment section below if you would have even considered folding this Jack-9. I want the YouTube comments to go nuts. Would you have actually folded the jack nine when you check raise the river and then Jay win rips it in kind of casually kind of quickly uh, oh, man i hate folding but this might be a fold i don't know let me know what you think in the comment section below good luck in your games have fun thank you for being here thank you for Jay win for letting us use this hand and i'll talk to you all next time